Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 13. In this tutorial we're going to add in a little bit more to our scene, so we're going to add, you know, the kind of drape propaganda things that we have. Uh, we'll look at adding a couple of plants in there as well, we're going to deal with font and a little bit more with UI. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload in this series and indeed everything else on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far then please feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll get things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the whole idea of uh, what we're going to call propaganda is you see them in the game and they're like hanging drapes on the wall itself with, you know, they're red and have a certain symbol on. Uh, I've custom made my own for this series rather than have that specific symbol on because I don't think it's appropriate considering uh, the channel I run here. But nevertheless, you don't have to use the same uh, propaganda material I do. So what I'm going to do is create a little holder for it on the wall and I'm just simply going to use a cube. So game object. And 3D object cube, place it here, shrink the size, uh, so probably on the Y, point 0.2, uh, X probably same I think maybe, maybe point 0.2 on the Z as well and just bring it probably to about there, it doesn't matter if it intersects the ball, it's completely fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is F2 and rename prop holder. And I'm going to go to the textures folder and I'm going to import this propaganda. And you can get this on the website if you head over there. Downloads and assets on Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone and tutorial number 13. So when we bring this into our scene, we're going to use another object called a plane to have this on. And we're going to play around with the material a little bit more. So if we go to game object, go to 3D object and you'll see... Yep, I'm sure you know what we're going to do here. You've got cube, no, 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 plane, right there, like I said. And this is essentially another type of 3D object, even though it technically is completely flat and only is textured one side, as we can see, if we go down. Uh, let's rotate this on the X axis. So we need to have it about like that. So minus 90, basically. <laughs> Uh, shrink it uh, to kind of fit how you'd expect it to be here. So let's shrink on the X to point 0.1 maybe, maybe a little bit more. And on the Z to point maybe 4, maybe too big, point 0.3. We'll, we'll do point 0.3 for now, see how that looks. So align it up with your other game object, which is the holder. So bring it out ever so slightly to about there. Bring it across and in line and bring it down to about there. Okay, so that is the basis of this object. And yes, it's square, but when we apply this now, we're going to be able to play with it enough to make it look as it should. So that propaganda, just drag and drop onto the plane. And it's upside down, so we just need to rotate. So why don't we use our rotate tool right here and rotate all the way around if my mouse skills would actually be better than what they are so probably to about there is it in fact why don't we just set it i'm sure it'd be a lot easier <laughs> minus 270 uh, minus 90 and 90 so it is perfectly straight still looks a little bit off because of the black at the bottom however if we click down here on the material we can change the rendering mode to cut out and there we go there is our propaganda in all its glory hanging from the wall. And again, you don't need to do the same thing I do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this placeholder up a little bit. The prop holder, I should say. And I'm going to increase the size of our plane on the... Um, should we do it on the Z? Because we need to make it taller, don't we? So 0 0.35. Does that look okay? Yeah, we'll stick with 0.35. And that's our propaganda. Uh, I'm going to place that plane inside the prop holder. And let's duplicate that. And let's bring it over here. So there we go. We can have the propaganda all over our walls now. And let's take a look how it looks in the game. 
should look, okay? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Ah, the door opened. So there we go. That is how we can do our propaganda. Brilliant. So next thing we're going to take a look at is font. Now you probably noticed a couple of minutes ago when I brought in this texture that we had a little font file in that folder that I import from. So let's go back to our main folder here. Right click, create a folder, and let's call this fonts. So in this fonts folder, I'm going to bring in this commercially free font. Uh, I'm not going to distribute it. However, you can search for this or use any font you like on Google. So we're going to use this font now to change how it looks in our canvas. So if we go to our canvas, double click so we can see the whole thing. And let's change this here. So to do that, we go to our UI panel and ammo panel. And on ammo label, we just need to drag and drop our font right here. So drag over here. And there we go. It's changed. Uh, you can have it bold if you want. Have it back to normal. I'm going to have it back to normal, actually. And I think I'm going to do the same with our ammo value. So drag and drop over to there. Maybe increase the size as well to 50, maybe. But at the same time, I probably want to increase the size of this to about there. Perfect. So let's take a look how that looks in our game now. Excellent. I just need to move this ammo uh, to center. Perfect. So I'm going to save my scene. So you can deal with fonts in a lot of different ways, and it really is that simple to attach a font to any object in your um, canvas, which is a text, and you can literally use any font at all. Uh, another thing I want to do, because we're going to do well, four things in total in this tutorial, and we're kind of blitzing them because these things are really, really easy. The ammo, the whole, you know, ammo text font is that's easy. That's said and done. You can do that with anything now. Uh, what we want to do is in the top uh, left corner, when you pick something up, it usually says like clip of bullets or something like that. So we're going to work on that now. So what we need to do is go to game object, go to UI text, and we need to anchor it in the top left. We're going to have it white and I'm going to keep it aerial and bold it and let's zero out the position and get it perfectly in place about there. Stretch that across and get rid of the text. So what we actually need to do on this is we need to basically, I want it to fade out. So I want it to display what we've done for a second and then fade out over another second or whatever. You, it's, it's up to you however long you want it to appear on screen. Uh, but what we'll do is, for now, let's put clip of bullets. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll work with that. So to do that, we need to go to animations, make sure we're still on text, but let's rename it to pick, I saw my caps out, pick up uh, text. Then let's click on animation and let's click on create and pick up anim. And then let's press the record button. So first things first, we do want this to be completely white in the alpha. So all we need to do is on that first keyframe zero, just retype 255 in the alpha down here. That will ensure that it does display completely white right there. So, as I said, we're going to have this display for a second, maybe two seconds. In fact, we'll do two seconds. So we'll go to uh, the 120th frame, so frame 120. And then we'll also set the color to 255. All this does is ensures that over that period of two seconds, the alpha remains absolutely the same. It never changes. It'll always remain completely white. So then after another 60 frames or another second, we want it to fade out completely. So let's go to frame 180. So now we're at the three second mark. At frame 180, we want to have the alpha set as zero. So it effectively fades out. After that, press the record button, go back to our project window, and then find that pick up uh, anim, untick loop time. So if we press play now, it will actually play that animation. There we go, clip of bullets, and it disappears. 
Uh, again, it's entirely up to you what you do with it. I might increase the font actually to maybe 24. And what we need to do now is turn that off. So how do we actually get this to function correctly in our game? Well, if we press play, it won't play because obviously it's turned off. But if we now turn it on, it will say we've picked it up and then play that animation. Turn it off again, turn it on, it will do the same thing again. So there could be different things that we need to pick up. So there's just a couple of things that we need to make note of within the scripts. So if we go to weapons and let's have, uh, which one is it to pick up the ammo? Where is our ammo? So it's handgun ammo pick. There we are. So let's go to this one initially. So all we need to do is in this script, we need to be able to reference the text object and be able to change what that text says, as well as um, actually enabling it to come on. But obviously that text will change if we pick up, say, uh, the handgun. So we just need to be mindful of that and change it in the relative script. So my Visual Studio is just loading up here and we're gonna do it for the ammo. And we're also going to do it for the gun over there. So as long as you change the main script, it doesn't matter where uh, your ammo clip is, uh, it will still apply the same. So handgun ammo pick. What we need to do is we need to have the namespace using unity engine.ui with a semicolon. And then we need to uh, declare the variable, which is going to be that text that we just created a few minutes ago. So public game object and pick up display semicolon. So at this point, what we need to do is on the trigger enter, we need to have pick up display dot get component and spiky brackets text open oh, close bracket dot text is equal to clip of bullets semicolon and i'm sure you probably guessed it all we need to do now is pick if i have my cap sorted pick up display dot set active true semicolon and effectively what we need to do at this point is use a coroutine to turn it off after, in fact, you know what? We probably don't even need a coroutine because what we could technically do is actually turn it off and then turn it back on rather than actually go through the hassle of a coroutine. Ah, there we go, Jimmy. Sometimes when you just sit and think for just a moment, you can come up with a great idea. So before we change the pickup display, let's turn it off. So set active, false, and let's save that script. Uh, take those three lines of code and let's also place them in handgun pickup down here. And obviously we need to do the same again using unity engine dot UI semicolon. And we need to have public game object pick up display semicolon. And we'll have this as handgun and save. So now once we've done that to our two scripts, what will happen is it will turn it off, change the text and then turn it back on again so as the animation will reset itself. So let's go back to uh, Unity, wait for it to compile just down here. So now what we need to do is because we only have a couple of objects, we just need to attach that extra pickup display variable over here to each of those. Uh, I believe the other one is up here. So we just need to attach that there. And then we need to do the same with our handgun. Handgun pick up trigger, pick up text right there. And I'm going to save that project and press play. So let's go and pick up our handgun. 
Excellent. And our clip. Perfect. Let's pick up the other clip. Brilliant. So we can see how that's working. So, again, this is something that we can change over time. We can modify, make it better. In fact, you could probably do it yourself if you want to work with it, play around with it. Uh, last thing I want to do is add in just a couple more um, environmental assets. And assets can come from quite unlikely sources, in all fairness. Uh, if we go to the asset store, and let's search, I've already pre-done this, uh, let's actually search for sci-fi styled modular pack. And this is a free asset. Now you think this doesn't look anything like Wolfenstein. However, there are assets within this that you could possibly use, which would look at least relevant in a Wolfenstein game, specifically these plants here. I quite like the look of them and I would like them in my game. This is a free asset. Um, just a heads up, I have had no input on this, no contact with the developer of this. I've chosen this because I like it and I feel it can add something to a Wolfenstein game. So if you want to download it, if you want to, perfectly fine. If not, don't worry about it. It won't affect how your end game will be. Uh, so it's right here for me and in here in the prefabs, um, we have uh, decorative, and I think it is one of these. It is one of these. I think it's this one. Yeah. So I'm going to have that there, and I'm going to have another one the other side of the door. Again, you don't necessarily have to. I just think this kind of thing adds a little bit to the game. You could always, if you wanted to, play around with the uh, texture of it. You know, you don't necessarily have to stick with everything that's in here. Play around with the materials. Yeah, you get the idea. Let's change the normal map. Let's see, you can change it like that. So it's just a little extra something to highlight the point that assets can come from the most unlikely places. So, guys, next tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is we are going to expand beyond this door here and we are going to bring in our first enemy so until that next tutorial guys thank you very much for watching